So, we are out again, out in the streets. And today we are in the uh, neighborhood of Palermo, and Plaza Italia. That's the uh, stop we just got off. I imagine right across the street there where the statue is, is the plaza. Um, but having looked on the map, I know that it's a big, big plaza. There's like a uh, zoo here, uh, or like a, some sort of a, like, bi uh, like a, like a zoo or a park with a lot of wildlife and whatnot in it. I don't know. That's not where we're going today. Um, today, we're actually going to go poke around uh, the Palermo neighborhood a little bit because uh, we want to, one, I want to buy a few gifts for some uh, family members because it is getting close to Christmas. And also, I want to buy a mate for myself. Uh, mate. And we talk more about yerba mate, which is a big deal around here in Argentina. Um, but first, as always, I'm going to try and find a cafe because I need some coffee. Uh, and then we're going to go find uh, a mate. I found this store that sells like tons of mates, and we can talk more about it when we get there. Okay, so, out of morbid curiosity, I decided to get breakfast at Burger King because I have not yet been to a Burger King here in Argentina, and I kind of wanted to see what it was like. We did get breakfast at McDonald's already, and it was pretty good. But uh, I can confirm, just like in the United States, the breakfast at Burger King here in Argentina is not good. Their coffee is not good. Definitely not as good as the breakfast and coffee at McDonald's. So, in case you were all wondering, it's the same here. It's the same here as it is in the United States. A very half-assed breakfast with a very not good coffee. Anyway, at least it wasn't very expensive. Uh, now we're heading down towards the, uh, the store where we're gonna buy our mate. It's a place called Todos Mates like means like everything mate anyway what is mate mate is kind of like a tea uh yerba mate it's called or here sherba mate is how it's pronounced and uh sometimes you'll see it like in the states and they'll have it like already brewed in a bottle or it'll be in like a tea bag or something or people will make it in a french press uh, but that's not how they do it here here they have like special gear for it special equipment special cup that's actually called a mate and a special straw that has a little like filter on the end of it called a bombisha which uh, funnily enough is also the word for light bulb in Spanish so when you see like Google translate translating things about uh, about mate it always talks about how you have to like suck on the light bulb it's kind of funny anyway uh, so we're gonna get that we're gonna get a mate and a bombisha we're gonna buy some yerba mate, the actual tea, and we're gonna give it a try. Um, there's like a lot of different brands of mate, and uh, mate is like a big deal uh, here in Argentina, but also in like Uruguay and Brazil and uh, other places sort of around this part of uh, South America. Uh, but in Argentina, there's like lots of different brands of mate, you know, 70 different brands of mate or something like that. And I have an idea sort of of which one that I want, but like each brand has a different sort of flavor profile, um, almost like coffee or wine. And uh, like I said here, they take it really seriously. So I'm hoping that at this place, since we're in like the Palermo neighborhood, which is pretty bougie, it's a pretty nice neighborhood. And uh, this store from what I saw when I looked at it on, uh, on Google Maps, it looked like pretty, pretty nice. You know, I think it does cater to tourists, which of course we are. So uh, I'm hoping that they'll have like a lot of different brands of mate and we'll be able to pick the brand that uh, has the flavor profile that we're looking for, I guess. Which for me is going to be something like not too strong, not too bitter, maybe a little sweet. Um, but anyway, once we get there, we will uh, show off the store and uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, so there's the spot right there, Todos Mates. And uh, you can see, after this fan drives by, 
this other van. <laughs> you can see all the mates right on the shelves. So we're gonna go check this place out. Also, you can take a look, quick look around the Palermo neighborhood. Now this neighborhood is like absolutely huge. It's a very big neighborhood. It's, it's divided up into like little sub neighborhoods. Palermo Hollywood, Palermo Soho. Uh, I think that's where we are now, Palermo Soho. I don't know, I'm not too familiar with this neighborhood, but like in most neighborhoods in Buenos Aires, st uh, streets are lined with big, beautiful trees, provide a lot of shade. It's a nice neighborhood. I walked through it just a little bit and it seems like, it seems nice. It also seems like there's a lot of uh, like other tourists and travelers staying here just on the corner over there at the cafe. I heard two people uh, talking to each other in North American English, so. So I'm not the only one. Anyway, uh, we'll go across the street here into the store and check it out. It's, it's kind of tiny and there's a lot of people in there and I don't want to really film in there too much, um, but we'll get, a, we'll get a couple of mates. One for, uh, one as a gift and one for myself. And then afterwards we can show them off a little bit. Okay, so this is the one that we got as a gift. I think it's really nice. It's wood. Got this uh, nice sort of design up at the top. And comes in. It's a little hard to show. I'm sitting on a, on a bench on the corner here. Come, got a bombisha. This is a special straw. Comes in a nice box. comes with instructions it comes with instructions on how to cure the, the mate because you have to cure it ahead of time um, which I already knew about and I'm gonna be able to do that on mine but for the person who I'm giving this to as a gift it's just gonna be easier that way they'll know about it and then also some mate and this brand, they said, was uh, like a not too bitter, smooth, uh, pretty pretty good brand, I guess, for new people. I also got a thermos that you can keep the, the water in, you know, because you carry around hot water. You have to keep, like, adding water to it um, as you drink it. And so people will carry around, like, a mate and a bombisha and a thermos. And they usually have, like, a little pouch, too, for the, for the, for the gerba they can put in there but anyway so that'll be the gift a nice uh, mate a bombisha some gerba and uh, and a thermos and then I got the same for me uh, and I'll show you that later but I don't really want to pull all that stuff out here on the bench <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll show you that stuff later and lucky for us there is uh, right down the street here a DHL not just any DHL, but a DHL where, uh, from what I have researched, we can ship this stuff. And uh, also, I'm pretty sure you can ship packages from here and not just letters. I think also, from what I have read, there may be an employee here who like speaks English, which would help because uh, shipping stuff internationally and only being able to try and do it in my shitty broken Spanish would be a problem. Um, so we're going to go down and find this spot and we'll get it taken care of. Alright, so mission accomplished. Took longer than I thought, of course. Everything everything I do around here feels like it takes longer than I think, think it's going to take. But uh, we found the DHL. We got our stuff all packed up, shipped off to the United States. So that's all done. And uh, I think that's really it for today. Walked around the neighborhood a little bit. Uh, and of course, when we get back, we're actually gonna try our own mate, and that's gonna be part of this video too. Uh, but uh, I think for right now, we just gotta hop back on the soup day, make our way back to the train station, head back home, and then we'll uh, we'll try out our own mate. So we'll see you. We'll see when that happens. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you know exactly what I think about my first mate experience, all right? So we'll see you soon. Okay, so here you can see my mate that I bought for myself. It's a nice simple one. It's wood. 
It's got uh, like a green stain on it, which I think looks cool. It's smaller than the other one that I got as a gift. I like this one small because, um, you know, I can take it with me uh, when I go places. Here's the uh, Bombisha. This Bombisha has like a different kind of a bulb filter on the end of it. And right now I am curing the, uh, the mate. So the first time before you use it, you're supposed to uh, put um, yerba in it like this and pour uh, like hot water into it. So I'm making myself a coffee and I got some hot water so I might as well do this too. I'm gonna pour in like a little bit and let it soak in. And then once it soaks in, you're supposed to leave it like this for basically like 24 hours. And it sort of um, causes, the, the hot water like causes some of the um, little, little um, I don't know, like little pores in the wood on the inside to expand a little bit. And it absorbs some of the water and the mate into it. And basically it makes it so that like the first time you, you drink from it, it doesn't taste bad. Um, and that's good because I don't want the first time doing mate like to taste terrible. So we're going to let that cure for 24 hours and then when we're done, uh, you know, tomorrow I guess, I will try my first, uh, my first taste of mate. So stick around. Okay, so when you do this, if I've learned correctly, Fill it up about, I don't know, like a little more than halfway. And then you have to like cover it with your hand and sort of shake it and pack it over into one side so that you're not like brewing all the mate all at once. Because if you're steeping it all at the same time, then it's too strong. See, so we pack it all, all onto one side. then we pour the water down into the empty part and some of the gerbil like falls down into the water and then we steep just a little bit at a time. So we poured in our water so that you can see the left side is like steeping but the right side over here is still dry and that way we can steep some of the leaves and the other side will stay dry and we can like steep those later. So I guess we let this steep for like just a couple minutes and then, uh, and then we can try it. All right, so well, let's try it. Let's try it, I guess. Here we go. Tastes, tastes a little like tea. It's stronger than tea, though. Like than normal normal tea. It's like a little bit bitter, just a little. Mm, it's good. It's a, it's a strange taste. It's almost like. It's almost like. <laughs> this is gonna sound like I don't like it and it's bad, but it's not. That's not the case. It's almost like what I think tea would taste like if you made it out of like grass. <laughs> Cause it has a very like earthy kind of a flavor to it. It's good. It's an unusual taste, but I keep going back for more, so. I'll come back in like a few minutes, 20 minutes or so, and I'll let you know how I feel because it's supposed to give you energy. It's supposed to give you like focus. It's supposed to be like uh, kind of like coffee, but not so jittery, more like balanced, more focused. So I'll let you know. So while we're waiting, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about mate, history of mate and the culture of mate because uh, it's a uh, it's a long history, actually, and it is a huge part of culture here in Argentina. Um, so, 
originally, even before the Spanish uh, came here, there were uh, the native people here in uh, in Argentina, in northern southern Brazil, in Paraguay. Uh, they were drinking. Well, they didn't call it yerba mate, which is actually interesting. The Spanish apparently heard. This is this is like there there are plenty of theories about how the name came about, and nobody really knows exactly how it came about. But the generally accepted theory is that. The Spanish heard people, some some uh, indigenous people of a certain tribe, we don't know who, were referring to the cup itself as a mati or a mate or something similar to that. And they got confused and thought that they were talking about the drink, which is why in Spanish the word mate actually means both the cup and the drink. Uh, but the drink itself or the leaves that they use to make the drink, which come from a plant that's like... Um, so it's similar to a holly plant, or it's in the same family as a holly plant. And it was grown naturally up in the northern part of Argentina, in like the Misiones uh, provinces, and then like southern part of Brazil, and in Paraguay. And there's actually evidence that even before the Spanish showed up, they were trading um, this, this plant because there's like evidence of um, indigenous people in Chile and in southern Argentina and in the middle part of Argentina where the plant does not grow that they were actually using it, uh, drinking it, chewing it um, and so it's really interesting there was probably a trade going on between different indigenous groups before the Spanish even arrived but when the Spanish arrived um, they they liked the stuff, they really liked the stuff so much so that like over the hundreds of years during the colonial period there were actually times when the Spanish crown like banned or regulated it because people were getting so addicted to it that they were like, I don't know, there's stories of them like selling their clothes and selling their horses and stuff to be able to get more, um, more yerba mate, which is pretty funny. But I mean, it does have caffeine, and caffeine is very, very addictive. So um, I guess it makes sense. Maybe you get like so addicted to this thing that you'd sell your horse to get more of it. I guess. But even though they were they were at sometimes banning and regulating it, they were also um, exporting it. And there was a time in like the 1600s when it was the largest export coming out of this region, even more than tobacco or sugar or. Um, uh, like like coffee and and uh, exports like that so it was it was quite popular it's really really popular and it still is really popular today like I said in the culture here in Argentina incredibly popular and it is uh, also a cultural thing it's more than just like you wake up and you drink it in the morning though some people do most people do actually I would say but it's a communal thing and this is something really interesting that's changed since uh, the pandemic is people aren't doing it as communally as they used to because what you would used to do is you'd see like in a park like this park that we're in right now uh, you'd see people sitting around and they'd all be sharing um, some yerba mate and they'd pass the mate around to everybody and for obvious reasons since the pandemic people aren't doing that very much anymore but it was sort of a way to bring friends together, um, to to because the the sherba actually has a lot of like uh, health properties, or you know allegedly, um, there are, it's it's healthy for you in a lot of ways, and so you're sort of like spreading health to your friends, to your group of friends by sharing um, some sherba mate with them, which I find really. Um, really cool that's a very cool cultural thing it's kind of a shame that um, it's not happening as much anymore but you can definitely see you know why since the pandemic people have been um, more reticent to uh, to share the mate so it's a big part of the culture here and another interesting thing I found is uh, while Argentina is uh, the largest producer of, of yerba mate the, the actual herb itself they're the largest producer in the world now um, it was Brazil for a while, but Brazilian agriculture moved more towards coffee, which 
is also really interesting because like in other countries where they drink sherba it's much more popular than coffee whereas here in argentina because of the very large um, Italian population, the Italians who came during the late 1800s and their descendants, coffee is a huge, huge part of the culture here in Argentina. And we might actually make a whole video about that. In fact, I think, I think we probably will make a whole video about that because I love coffee and it's really interesting how, how deep the coffee culture here is in Argentina. But that said, they are the largest producer of, um, of Sherba here in, in Argentina. And a lot of it, interestingly, gets exported to Syria. And the story there is that during um, the late 1800s, a lot of people from Syria immigrated here to Argentina. We talked a little bit about this in uh, the video where we went out to the, the King Fahd Islamic Cultural Center. And a lot of those Syrians you know, or their descendants later immigrated back to Syria, but they brought sort of the love of mate and the culture with them. And so there's actually a large export market for Argentine um, uh, Jerba to Syria, which I thought was really interesting. Okay, but getting back to the history, the Jesuits who arrived here in like the 1600s, early 1600s, late, late 1500s really, but early 1600s, they actually started a lot of uh, missions to try and convert native people to Christianity. This is like up in the, the northern part of Argentina where, where the Sherba grows naturally. And they actually figured out a way to cultivate and grow it like domestically, which to this point, nobody had done. The uh, the Spanish uh, settlers and colonizers in the in the like region of Paraguay had just used indigenous labor to go out and farm it naturally, like uh, farm farm meaning like harvest it, harvest it naturally from natural sources. And uh, interestingly, the Jesuits, the reason they um, they domesticated it was because there were like in the missions that they started, they pretty much had autonomy to do whatever they wanted um, without the Spanish crown, like, um, you know, without, without a lot of like oversight from the Spanish crown. But there were certain things that they would need that they weren't able to like grow domestically there in the, the missions or whatever, but they would need some sort of trade. So either gold or, or some sort of monetary trade that they would be able to trade for things that they needed that they couldn't produce themselves. And one of the things that they would either trade for money in order to trade for other things, or they would trade directly for other things was Sherba. Because, you know, like all the Spaniards were like super addicted to it and they were like selling their horses to get it. So, so they would trade the Sherba, but that sort of started to cut in on the, um, like the Spanish, uh, the Spanish farmers in Paraguay, the, the plantation owners who were who were farming it um, in in Paraguay, so that was that was kind of a problem. It's one of the things that may have led to, uh, you know, one of the factors that contributed to the Jesuit expulsion, which actually I think we're going to talk about in a future video. So stay tuned for that. But there there's a very long history of either harvesting. Or cultivating sherba in this area and like I said it goes back before even the Spanish arrived and now I mean it's so popular here if you go to a, uh, a grocery store even like a little corner market there'll be a whole aisle that's just dedicated to sherba there's so many different brands of it and uh, yeah pretty much everybody does it even in the place here in Argentina where they are crazy about coffee still like everybody does does sherba everybody everybody is drinking the sherba so i guess it's time we uh we uh we talk about talk a little bit about how how this sherba has made us feel okay so it's about 20 minutes later and uh, i had about two cups like i filled it 
I drank it and I filled it again, drank it again. And uh, it's not even that much water. Like the the cup is pretty small and the the sherba takes up like a good amount of space in the cup. So, but even with that, I could tell, I mean, I could definitely tell there's caffeine in it. Like it woke me up for sure. I got like some pep. Um, like I had to pee like right afterwards too because because uh, of the caffeine. So there's definitely caffeine in it. Um, and I would say like I feel alert and awake, but not jittery, you know. Um, I guess I feel pretty focused. I don't know. I don't know how you how you define feeling focused, but um, I feel good. And I would say that it is ad- as advertised. It gives you like some energy uh, from the caffeine, but not jittery like the way uh, you get when you drink like too much coffee. So, um, so pretty good actually. And you know what I realized is, as I let it steep a little more, the flavor became like almost smoother, stronger, but like smoother too, which was weird. And also, I kind of like got used to the flavor more, and I like it. So, um, I guess I guess today, <laughs> I'm actually uh, there's a holiday today, so a lot of stuff is closed. So I'm not really going to be able to like go out and do much. There's not much to do. So I figure I'll just stay in and like I can edit some videos, which I need to do, and uh, use this like you know energy and focus that I got from the sherba. But overall, I would say thumbs up. Definitely like it. My first time trying Chevro Mate. Um, it's good. It's definitely good. And it does, it, as advertised, it gives you energy, but not like too jittery like coffee. So maybe maybe I'll start having a, a cup of, uh, of Sherba in the morning instead of a cup of coffee. Maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll probably like alternate back and forth. But um, yeah, that's going to be it. First time trying Sherba and uh, Sherba Mate, and I, uh, I like it. I definitely like it. So there you go. All right. Uh, that's going to be it for the video. I'm going to get to some video editing and I will see you all in the next video.